Recently, I went to McDonald's and that's where I found this kiosk. This lets you order the food without actually going to the counter. But I saw some kids struggling with it because the things were very hard for them to reach. That's when I saw one of them using this feature called accessibility, which brings down a lot of things in that bottom half of the screen and it made it easier for them. So that's when I thought about it, that when you make things more accessible, you not only solve for the kids, you also solve for the elderly as well as people who are disabled in some form and that's why we are bringing to you this session this session is being conducted by Garima Mehta who is a senior product designer at PayU she's one of the best people in the industry to teach you how to design for accessibility and I'm sure that you're going to learn tons from this video if you do make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that we can keep bringing you back great content every single week as Rohan mentioned, accessibility is something that is very close to my heart as well. I started my journey as a, as a graphic designer. Then I moved into UI, UX. And for about one year, I have worked on a live project in a, in a telecom industry, which was focused a lot about how we can make communication better for people with different types of disabilities. And we tried to make a universal for all product in the American market. So I have had an experience of doing a live project as well as my own research into doing document accessibility into social media accessibility or writing email in accessible format as well. Apart from that, I also volunteer my time with the diversity and inclusion team at uh, Infosys. We have about uh, 400 employees. They have different stories where they come from, what has been their journey at Infosys. And I personally uh, love being engaged with them and I also create awareness and training materials on how employees in general can help the other people who are slightly different from how we behave in usual. So here comes the first slide about right to internet. When we talk about web accessibility, I think one very important thing we need to understand that apart from education, apart from general necessities, internet has become a very important part of our lives. So just, you know, you buy your groceries online, you do all the finances online for education, for entertainment, you're dependent on internet so much then why do we call some people as weaker section of the societies and then we don't give them the privilege to be using internet and our digital products so is that fair for us definitely not so there are about 26 million people in India who are disabled and these are statistics from 2011 10 years back and I'm sure you know the number must have grown larger now if I have just put forward a comparison in general you might think that this is a very small number but that's not how it is. It's almost 8.4 million into three times as much as population of a Bangalore city in 2011. Now imagine when you build a startup that is focused a lot on metropolitan cities or you start a product that is only based for people in Bangalore. The population that is disabled in India is almost equal to that target section. So imagine the number of people you're missing out for your target audience and your consumers. So accessibility is to identify exclusion points and I say you know fill in the gaps that are left by different product uh, owners and different product managers as well. So I would say you know when you're creating a particular product a lot of times we get biased about what our user requirements. So here our job is to find what is that particular point or what are these kinds of strategies or exclusion points that we do not allow other people to use our product. So accessibility not only helps in bringing up disabled people on board but also for people from rural backgrounds or you know people who would not have English as their uh, main language or as well as I would say aged people. I know people I think most of us will agree with this that Facebook and WhatsApp they were never created for older ages but now I see the entire day my WhatsApp is just filled with a lot of junk my uncle aunties that even my grandmother keeps sharing. So I think it becomes very important that the more simple the product is it becomes even more accessible and especially the culture of such masses now our mass is not a very specific target audience so just take Facebook as an example we started using Facebook in very earlier days and then our parents started using it and now this has also been adapted by very older ages even 70 plus what do they require to stay updated on Facebook they need simpler navigations they need good font sizes to read and they need it to be interactive and easy to 
use so this is what accessibility talks about accessibility is not something very different or you might not require an additional effort to do it but it just brings more people on board one of my favorite theories about accessibility is the theory of purple pound which denotes purple for disabled people and pound for the money they hold so a lot of theories have also suggested that disabled people are not weak people disabled people are not people who come from a very lower economic classes there are people in the world who have great spending power in fact a study in uk has said that the total amount the spending power of the disabled people is 249 billion pounds which is a big number so a lot of your favorite brands have already been sued for not being compliant to accessibility in different countries so i'll just give you on a simple case of uh, dominos one of the guys in chicago he wanted to order a pizza and he was visually impaired he did not have easy access to internet now the website that was not compliant was asking this person to actually go to the restaurant and order a pizza for himself so in this case dominos this guy sued dominos for not being compliant to accessibility practices so then dominos you know lost the case and they were sued a very big amount for the same so a lot of different brands have already been fighting this case against uh, accessibility criteria especially if your product is in us or uk region then it becomes even more mandatory for you to get into accessibility practices so just uh, as i said in us the cases have really skyrocketed you see there's been a 177% of increase from 2017 to 19 in just 3 years and now if i think about it in terms of covid now imagine you don't want to go out because it's not safe you you have so many hygiene or health constraints now in that scenario are we putting disabled or you know aged people into a situation that they cannot use the digital products and they have to walk into a physical environment so here's one video from one of the campaigns that india also runs i'm not sure if anybody must have heard of it we heard a lot about digital india campaign but there's something also called as sugamya bharat campaign that works a lot around why accessibility is important in india as well disability is certainly not inability if you have proper accessibilities like a metro and someone great has said mere man mein vichar aaya kyon na hum hamare desh mein vikalang ki jagah par divyang shabd ka upyog kare ye wo log hain jinke paas wo aisa ek ang hai या एक से अधिक ऐसे अंग हैं जिसमें दिव्यता है दिव्य शक्ति का संचार है जो हम सामान्य शरीर वालों के पास नहीं है सो आई थिंक आई गो बाय दैट so you're interested you can go ahead and look out for accessible india campaign in which there are multiple campaigns going on around accessibility in physical as well as digital space so it's not only something that is going outside india or you know in an international market but hasn't reached india yet there are a lot of campaigns go- going on but we're not much aware on that this is one of my very important findings that i have come across and this is the reason that i decided to work on accessibility and practices around it so initially when i started working on my project i did not have a more understanding of you know what is accessibility how is that important is it just term that people want to do it because you otherwise you might get legal so then i came across different stories and especially when i started working with diversity and inclusion team it was a surprise to me that there are people in my company who started their jobs as engineers they started living a normal life that i was living and around an age of 25 to 30 or even after that they face some kind of a medical complication i'll give you this example of one guy i met who creates all the training materials along with me for accessibility practices and one day he called me up and he said that you know uh, i'm unable to read the email that you have sent me i was just new to this and you know i had just started working along with him i did not know i asked him why why can't you read i mean what's the problem so he said you have attached a picture or you have just 
imported a screenshot in the email and uh, i am a screen reader person i am visually challenged i use screen reader and my screen reader is unable to read what you've read, uh, sent me so then uh, it was very disheartening for me that i practice web accessibility practices and in general notion i wasn't aware of accessibility things that i must carry out this guy he joined as an engineer and around the age of 25 due to some genetical problem and medical complications he got a severe eyesight issues that led to degrading of his visual capabilities and now he cannot see now imagine something like that that is a very different case but think something about simple like an accident or anything else so life is very unpredictable here's an example of a bhopal gas tragedy which has been you know dated long long back but it was found that 40 tons of heavy toxic gas was released in air and even 30 years later there are children being born with different cognitive disabilities and physical impairments as well there are people in india who are born with down syndrome with adhd and lot of different complications and here's another quick video that i would want to show before I, it becomes quite it's not that depressing or sad about it there are people in the world who are taking these practices and who are creating a very inclusive world so haiti was one of the countries where in 2010 during the earthquake about one third of population got handicapped and then the entire restructuring of the government happened and they created so many inclusive tech needs to live in fact in th- there was a time where you could actually see you know doctors and professionals actually going on wheelchairs and these kinds of things in haiti there is a soccer team unlike any you have ever seen it is made up of players who have lost legs and arms mostly during the earthquake in 2010 the players kick with the same leg they stand on goalies defend with the only arm they have the team is called zarian that is creole for tarantula a spider that can live without one of its legs hey let's pause for a second i hope you are learning great stuff here i'm just here to ask you if you are make sure to subscribe so that we can keep bringing back fresh content for you guys every single week let's go back so here you see how very simply you know you can help people in different ways now how do we start so as designers it's not just that we make beautiful things right we make different products we create experiences and we are people also involved into a technical transformation right there were so many products which were not there in the past 10 years so we have actually changed lives of people so then it also becomes our responsibility that we do something that is inclusive in nature coming to how do we actually practice this we need to know before we start doing that that what is an assistive technology so different people have different ways of using internet or using desktop mobile applications everything they have different touch points as well so i will discuss in brief three different types of assistive technologies one is assistive technology for visually impaired people so most of the visually impaired people when you say visually impaired a lot of people might think of blind but there is again a spectrum of different visual um, competencies there might be people who only require screen magnification or zoom feature now i am someone who wear glasses in general and i prefer my phone on a zoom mode so does my mother does it so that is one very a general feature that most of the people might be using. using on default mobile settings then come screen readers screen readers are just softwares that convey all the important textual and non textual information from the screen in an audio format a basic difference between a screen reader and a text to speech converter is that a screen reader can read text as well as non textual which is images graphs anything that has been coded in that for example we called it alternate text all text so an image can also have an all text coded with it so when a screen reader goes through the screen reader will read the what is in the image for the person but text to speech converter can only read the text coming to braille now braille i think a lot of people already know so when there are severe medical complications like people who have auditory hearing problems as well as visual problems a lot of them use braille and braille embossers so a quick video on how a braille works the orbit 20 braille display will revolutionize how we read braille books My name's Claire. I've been a Braille reader since I was 5. I read every Braille book that was available in my school 
and they kept having to order more books for me. And I always had to have a rucksack or a suitcase to lug these books around in. If I'd had something like the Orbit 20 reader back then, it would have been so different for me because it's so portable and easy to put in your bag and take with you anywhere. It can be used as a standalone device. You can preload your Braille files onto an SD card which slots into the back of the device. It can be in grade one or grade two in any language that you want as well. I can read my French and my Spanish books. The Orbit 20 can be connected to your smartphone or to your computer and can be used with screen readers like JAWS. One of the best things about the Orbit 20 is its price. It costs hundreds of pounds rather than thousands. It proves to me that technology is there to enhance the Braille reading experience, not to replace it. To find out more about the Orbit 20 reader. So you see here, the, the character is being converted into Braille using this device. So all of this is only possible when we actually code or we actually create the experience that will accommodate the external device to work with your application. Coming to hearing impairments, three major things. One is the hearing aid that usually people with lower hearing capabilities they use. Then captions. Unfortunately, because of technical constraints, we were not able to have live captions on this you know streaming but otherwise we would have definitely tried so captions were the audio it's, it's just like subtitles that you see on your any movies or anything then transcripts are uh, separate documents usually that are created so that if somebody who's not following the video audio something like that they can go through the textual document moving to mobility impairments even here there are different and wide range of assistive technologies available like different kinds of keyboards different voice recognition apps, sip and puff tools. So Apple is one of the pioneers into accessibility and they have multiple default features that allows users to do, do these things. And if you're interested, you can go over and watch these videos on YouTube. They are just amazing. They even have, you know, different ways of doing it and they have separate videos. So there's a video about a guy who cannot see but is a radio jockey. Now, can you imagine this guy? So a lot of people say when you're avoided of certain capabilities, God gives you another additional capability. So you should definitely watch that video. So Web Accessibility Initiative and W3C is the organization that actually looks into web accessibility. And there are three core areas that they work into. One is WCHE, ATHE and UAAG. So ATHE and UAAG are more about the browsers or the different tools that are used. But WCAG is where majorly we'll focus about on how to make web content accessible. There are three major conformance levels. One is level A, which means that these are some mandatory standards that you should definitely have on your platforms. The double A is a recommended standard, which would be good to have. And triple A is something very specialized. So here, if you see, I've put three pictures of ramp. So if I see a public space, having a ramp is very important because having a ramp gives you access to people with wheelchairs, even if something simple like you want to get your bicycle up on. So having a ramp becomes becomes very easy for people to use that area. Now, a better way of putting a ramp would be a smoother ramp or you know, you could decide on what is a good slope, what should be the correct angle so that it becomes more efficient as a ramp. And the third one would be a travelator, something like that, which you just need to stand on that and the ramp will take you. So triple A is a very specialized version, but A and double A can definitely be done on web practices easily. We need to understand that disability is designed by our flaws and what different product experiences that we create and now we will understand how do we make a product better and get over with this flaw in our product we have to understand for the fact that an average user does not exist when we create personas i have you know experienced this a lot of time that we create a very specific goals of a person these are definitely the motivations and i'm sure that this person is going to be these are going to be the characteristics of this person but there's nothing Nothing like an average user. So what you can do is include more of points. For example, if your product also involves people of age 40s, then there might be people who have reading glasses. Think about them. Will they use 
some technology like zoom feature that i was talking about as a designer we are at a part where we decide who people will be included in our product and who will be excluded now when we create such concrete personas then we are the person who create the line of division so if you see here these are the people who are excluded from our products and these are the included people that i was talking about in the personas but when i include more of attributes in the persona i can involve even more people so as a designer it becomes a responsibility for us that who all can we get on board so the design process now before we move into design process we need to understand that accessibility is not only one person's responsibility it involves everybody's attention and it involves everybody to know that it is important be it product owner or be it developer or project managers we need to include accessibility as a practice in the entire product cycle so that just as you know usability testing is done and we keep iterating the similar way accessibility has to be done so three major things that i would say in my opinion is the correct process for it is identify define and then apply so you need to identify and analyze what are the existing accessibility problems in your platform for that there are different methods and techniques that i will be talking about now once you identify you need to make clear distinction on what is going to be my level of accessibility what will i do or what accessibility practices will our product allow people to do for that we generate a public accessibility statement for uh, people who are in us and uk and they have mandatory laws it is also mandatory for them to put up a public accessibility statement up on their website so that if there is some that goes against them if there are people who have difficulty using it they can always refer to the statement and the the statement can tell them that we are working in progress and we will be doing certain things to make our website compliant so to generate accessibility statement there are various websites that help you do that site improve is one of the quickest and easy to do this you can go to site improve and look for an accessibility statement generator where you add your company and organization name the urls that you will be making accessible and the date of generation then what are the efforts that you will do or you know your organization is actually going to do are you going to make it internally uh, you know accessible are you actually working on a mission or what are the clear organization goals so site improve has put forward all the important goals that you can go through and then you can clearly check from here itself and add it to your statement and if anything additional you can definitely add here then the status of conformance what is the level of conformance can your website adhere to now here it says wchg 2.1 level aa and 2.0 level double a so 2.0 was developed about 5 to 10 years back and 2.1 was recent now there's an announcement about 3 as well but that's a working draft and it's probably it might take another 5 6 years for it to be generated so you need to really state here what is the level that you will work on then coming to what is the current conformance status for you now as of now i have just selected unknown so for now is it fully conformant are you generating the statement after you have checked the accessibility evaluation of your website and you're saying that it's conformant or is it partially conformant or non conformant at all and you can just go select unknown if you're still not aware but you are going to try and you are working on that mission then you can give descriptions about the issues that are currently in the uh, website or the url that you have chosen and keep adding all the issues here then you can add the technical specification about which browsers which which technologies and which assistive strategies that you are going to work on further what are the assessment methods that you are taking uh, forward if later some kind of issues come what have been the evaluation process that you have followed and then the lastly feedback process now this also becomes very important because if somebody finds out that there is some issue that they have come across who do they contact where do they raise the complaints so these kinds of sites can help you generate quick accessibility statements for your website or what for your brand moving forward to defining your users so as i said you need to define your users even more elaborately and uh, find more attributes to add to your persona the methodologies and conformance levels of accessibility then coming to applying stage before we apply we need to see how different browsers and screen readers work so here's one example of how nvda works for a website breaking news world news and multimedia window so here if you see button, search button internal link 
internal ink. This is being used with the keyboard. Now, NVDA is one of the you know, most NVDA JAWS. These are two very popular screen readers. And NVDA is also available online for free, I think. And you can have a look on how it works. So when you're navigating through a keyboard, how it actually works for people. They have also added an important link called a skip to navigation and search. These two things are very important and crucial for any accessible website. For example, now if as a visually impaired person, if I had to just just read the news here. I would require a skip to navigation to avoid all the entire navigation items put forward here. List one item, link, end of list, log in button, settings button, list three item, US, link, link, end of list, Frank, heading, list one item, Thursday, link, link. So using the shortcuts on the keyboard, people can navigate between sections, between internally into sections and then go header to header. Now style guide also becomes a very important part when you're implementing the CSS here. Now as a design system manager, we always create a guideline saying h1, h2, h3 and then subtitles, body text, how it is going to be there. But often when we you know, create the designs, we miss out on some particular elements. Now if you see here, US attorney, this is one header. The second, if I go to next, then what should come is the second description about the news. What is the date? Where where has it happened? Location and all. And the third is the body. Now, as a person, if I just wanted to go through headlines only, then I will use that particular NVDA shortcut that will only take me through title to title. So, in this case, design system helps you manage from moving internally. Are you going to read the entire news article or are you just moving between titles? Leaving list 12 link 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 end of list leaving group landmark entering main landmark frame 2 heading level 2 top news heading level 2 link u.s attorney warns cuomo on ethics investigation by suzanne craig thomas kaplan and william k rashbaum the letter from the prosecutor investigating Governor Andrew M. Cuomo's cancellation of his own anti-corruption commission came after members of the panel publicly defended the governor's handling of the commission. Link 144 comments. Heading level 2 link. Netanyahu vows to continue. So when you saw here in the article, with every title when it goes to the headline, it also says level 2, which means that this has been put up in the CSS. So accessibility evaluation. There are four major ways where how you can do the evaluation. Quick checks are some just like usability heuristics. There are some accessibility heuristics that you can look into. Another is automated tools. So these are just quick tools that will check the website and then give you an analysis report. The third is conformance reports. These are slightly difficult to do and can need expert involvement as well. The fourth is real users. Now this also becomes slightly tricky, especially when you have people who are going through a lot of different struggles in their life. They are visually challenged. They have hearing disabilities, a lot of different things. So getting the right people and building a, an empathy with them becomes a huge task. So for a quick analysis, I can suggest two things. One is accessibility heuristics by Deku. Deku is one of the most popular accessibility consultancy agency and they have a list of a checklist, a very simple checklist that you can look into and you can go through the heuristic evaluation. And the other is automated testing tool. So accessibility heuristics by Deku is majorly based on 10 important pointers and they're not very different than usability. It just basically talks about interaction methods. Is something on your website uh, dependent on mouse? Because mouse cannot be used by everybody. If there's a visually impaired person, they will not be able to use the cursor. So then these kinds of simple text check marks will help you analyze it. So I will quickly give you a brief on the, this is what uh, it looks like, a simple heuristic evaluation where you can download this from their website itself. It's available for uh, public. And on the basis of each 10 pointers, they have clearly identified some important criteria that you need to fulfill. And then on the basis of what your website allows, you can put the rating that is it best, it works efficiently or is it there, but it's like, okay, is it not there? or not applicable for you. So these are some 10 pointers like interaction method, language and readability. Is the language that is being used easy to understand? Can people easily know what they have to do or understand the errors and all? Coming to navigation and wayfinding, do people know where in the website are they? Are titles easily telling people that what are they going to do or what which page are they in? Predictability and consistency. Again, this talks about you shouldn't have different navigation designs. 
because it becomes difficult for people to understand what's happening. Structure and semantics, just as, as I just showed you, it becomes important that you have a clear hierarchy level set so that people with different assistive technologies can actually navigate through. Timing and preservation is again important for people who have cognitive disabilities and who are visually challenged. There might be a model that says that in 10 seconds, if you don't complete this, then the, the process will stop. So there has to be a clear identification or telling them that in 10 seconds, you will scrap this particular process. In non-critical scenarios, you can also give them an ability to extend their session. For example, logout. Something simple like a logout can be done using the timing and preservation method. Then error prevention and states. When you tell people that there is an error, I have faced this in multiple forms. You are filling a form, you reach to the end and you click on next. But there is an error because of which it's not going to the next step. Now, if you put that error in the end after the process is done, then you have to scroll and go to the back, find where the error is. But a visually impaired person will not be able to scroll through the entire website and find it. So error needs, if there is a format set, for example, if there is a date and you put it into a wrong format, it immediately needs to tell the person that there is an error. And what is the error? Coming to movement and flashing, it has been found out that some flashing content becomes very difficult for people and it makes them discomfort. So use micro interactions which are subtle, easy to see and not harsh. Then contrast and legibility. I think Figma and XD, they have a lot of different contrast understanding tools and there are a lot of plugins that help you understand the contrast of foreground and background. Is my text easily readable to people? So I will cover this tool as well in the upcoming slides. And the last one, visual and auditory alternatives. When I talk about the my experience with the telecom industry, the project that I was working on, so we had voicemails. Now we were thinking if a user being is being sent a voicemail and they have hearing disabilities, they cannot hear. So then we allow them to also have transcripts along with voicemails. So if there is something that is auditory or visual, there has to be an alternative way to perceive the content. So to check your content guidelines and what you want to do, how much you want to do. This is all the understanding that I have, but it's up to you how much you can do, what is your timeline, what is your feasibility. So you can find out at uh, WCAG quick reference website where on the left you see all the content is being clearly mentioned with links but there is a filter that clearly gives you an idea of what you want to do so you can set your expectation what is the version that you want to work on then are you a developer are you an interaction designer content creator or visual design only so you can select what all you want if you want you can remove the developer section it will remove some of the developer content from here and then how much level can you manage to do so you can put all the requirements and this will give you all the easy and quick tips on how you can do it along with the levels that what all you need to do all the guidance you can get from here moving to auto testing tools so one of my favorite tool is wave web accessibility evaluation tool where you can simply just put the website url and it will give you all the analysis although auto testing tools are very quick it's important that we also do a manual testing because auto testing tool will only tell you what is present and what is not on the basis of quantifying the presence of it. But what about the context? Now imagine if you have a picture of a dog playing. Now the auto testing tool can only tell you if there's an alt text present or not. But if the alt text is saying the correct thing, is it only talking about the dog or is it telling you the dog is in the park playing or is it telling you the dog is running because of some threat or a danger? So the context can only be set with a manual intervention. Now here you can see that all the details are available about the errors, the contrast, then redundant alternative text. If it's a long alternative text, missing fields and everything. So on such kind of tools, you get all the details about the accessibility evaluation and contrast errors. So these are some of the contrast issues that are being found. Now if I click on this, it will give me an exact detail of which text is it talking about. It's highlighting this portion that says that the foreground and background does not have enough of contrast. So some quick design considerations apart from these. One is the color contrast that I was talking about. So here are some of the important tools that you can use. Color contrast says that for graphical elements like icons and text, you need to have some kind of a ratio that gives people enough of readability. So again, there are a lot of Figma and tools that you can use. Stark is one of my favorites. So let me just show you. So this one is from XD where I have just a quick reference of a dashboard. The Stark plugin allows me to do a colorblind simulation 
as well as check contrast. So if I do a colorblind simulation, I can actually see different colors, how people with different color blindness will see it. As of now, as a normal person, I see two colors, blue and green. With someone with protonopia might see it as blue and something like a brown. And a person with tritonopia will not actually see, there's no difference for them. So if I just mark them as two colors and say that first line represents 2018, second line represents data from 2019, they might not understand. So you might need a different, maybe a dotted line and a dashed line or a thinner line, something like that, that clearly identifies apart from color that what is the data here. So color dependency, avoid problematic color combinations for functional elements. Now, if I tell somebody that press the red button, if you're in a danger, that's an emergency app, right? Press the red button for disconnecting the call. Then there might be people who will not understand red. So you need to either have an icon that identifies that or an along with that, a text or something else that also conveys the same message. These are some of the most common forms of color blindnesses that I have mentioned. There are people who cannot identify between red and green color, blue and purple and so on. So avoid using color as a source of communicating any information of our activity. Then text, use a legible font size and a 150% of line height. This also becomes easy for people to understand paragraphs. Avoid lightweight text and use enough contrast. I think in uh, font sizes became very popular but when you actually create them into you know develop them it becomes sometimes very difficult to read in uh, real products make line length around 50 to 60 characters on desktop and 30 40 characters on mobile so again as i said usability and accessibility they're not two different things so if i go with z or you know f pattern having defined line length really helps people to move from first line to second line and go further scalability again as i mentioned some people might use zoom feature to see how if they have difficulty reading the text so in this case you will have to as a designer tell the developer in case the screen is increase the size how it should look like here if you see the first screen if you see in the first screen i have clearly you know just showed all of that but here if i increase the font size all the content might get merged if you see this line learn how to prototype this has got overlap with the icons so you need to define clear grids columns and sometimes also the developer will have to create containers that help define you where the content has to stop or where it has to overlap so if you see this screen where i have put a layout in the text here i have clearly defined that the first text or the first part of the screen will only be in five columns the second one will be in three other columns in that case there is always a 12 pixels of gap between both the text so you will have to define all of these containers for scalability then three-step recovery as i mentioned it's very important to understand what is the error where is the error and how do i fix it because as a visually challenged person it will be difficult for them to find it then animations some people might get epilepsies or seizure attacks looking at very flickering kind of a image or you know some kind of micro interaction just think about it as going to you know a club and a light flickering on yourself so some people get very discomfort or you know uncomfortable with these kinds of animation and the last one is the yellow color a lot of people have find it yellow as very disturbing so avoid using too much of yellow on one particular screen. i hope there was a lot of information here but usability and accessibility always go hand in hand and there is always a little bit that you can do even if level a that you can achieve i'm sure that it will really help people and it will bring more access to people for your products i hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from it if you did make sure to subscribe so that we can keep bringing you back great content every single week also do check out this video on how to create amazing stories with the help of motion design in your products this is a video by atul khola who is from credits design team and he shares some amazing principles around how can you make motion design to tell great story i'll see you in that video till then happy designing